Aloha Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Ehu Kekahu Cardwell, and we're here today at Thomas Square for Hawaiian Restoration Day, Kala Hoi Hoiea 2006. And we have with us Marie Beltran. Marie, aloha. Aloha. Welcome to the show. So good to have you on. Come on, stand this way <laughs> so we're facing the camera. And uh, we have Marie on the show because you know, we've heard about Hawaiians who occupy the beach, who live on the beach, and Marie, is one, you're one of those people, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And moreover, you're not only one of those people, but you're proud of it, aren't you? Yes, because I learned our culture, and it takes us back to our ancestors and feeling the roots and what it was like, and not, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, great. So let's start by telling our viewers which beach you live on. I live out on Mokalea Beach Park uh -huh. with my five children and my 12 grandchildren. Wow. And they love it out there because it's peace and quiet and they all sleep under the stars. Wow. And we know out there there's lots of stars at night, yes? Tons of stars. Tons of stars. <laughs> and tell us how long you've been out there. Well, we've been out there for 14 years now and we've been getting harassed by the police officers mm -hmm. and by city and county. And that's not going to stop us from living out there. We're not scared no more, so. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what made you go out there initially? What, what, what issue was it uh, 14 years ago? I was told that I, would live, I was going to live on a beach. They never tell me which beach, but I like it. I lived in Haula, was born in, well, was raised in Haula, born in Honolulu, and so, I think that's one special place that God put me there with my family. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me earlier that Mokulea Beach for you is a very spiritual place, yes? Yes, it is. Tell us why. Uh, at night, that's the only beach we feel safe on. I mean, it is scary because you have drug people running around, you know, but out there it's just like nobody bother you at night. Mm -hmm. and. It's so you you can feel the spirits out there, and it's like they guard you, you know. And I wouldn't know how to express it unless you come and share it. <laughs> okay, so this is an open invitation. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there may be a line where we have to take a number before too long. <laughs> but it is a spiritual place, and I love it. And I don't find it any other place but there. Yeah. Marie, what is it about, because I know this because I've talked to other people about this, what is it about being connected to that, to a one, to one place like that? Well, they, that place chose me and my family, I guess, because I watch a lot of people live there, gone, and I don't know, something about, I guess, my family is pretty special, I guess, which we want to think that we are because we've been there for 14 years and people just come and go and some of them can't sleep there at night. And for us, it's like an honor because we can sleep there in peace and harmony, you know? And just listening to Mama Ocean is so heaven. Mm. We're in heaven. Yes, yes. So you said you've been harassed by the police, by the police city, county, state, yeah. And, and, and so w what do they tell you? You have to get out of there? They say you have to leave and they put all kinds of rules and now they made a trespassing Act 50 that was target for me and my family. But what they don't understand that I'm not afraid of their, their targets anymore mm -hmm. because they're not only targeting me and my family, but I guess they don't look at it that they're targeting them and all nationalities because they're all trespassing on land that's not even theirs. And when we go to their courthouse, I mean, I don't, they say treason a lot. And they say treason? Treason. Oh my goodness, that's a very strong word. And so, but I don't see them, they talk about that and I don't see them getting the penalties. I don't see them going to jail for all the wrong things that they're doing. I don't see, and the judge always stating for the state of Hawaii and not the people, something is wrong there, you know? Yeah. So, so this, actually this, you, you slept on the beach, living on the beach, 
the police came, made all these rules, you found yourself in well, court. Well, city, city and county make all the rules okay. by the legislature, they say. Okay. But yet they forgot. We had one law before they came in, and then they say the federal government had a law for us, mm -hmm. giving us these rights, mm -hmm. but the state of Hawaii is trying to take these rights away mm -hmm. and saying it's trespassing and it's illegal mm -hmm. when they know that they're illegal here, just as illegal as us. More so because they're the foreign occupier. Yes. Okay, so this has turned you into a bit of an activist now, hasn't it, Marie? Oh, yeah, <laughs> because I had to learn their English laws and, uh -huh. and see and look up for myself how come they doing all of this. And, yeah, like Brother said, we all equal here. Mm -hmm. And like America said, all men is the same. Well, I don't see it that way. I mean, they showed me another picture, like, you don't see that they carry it out that way. Right. Yes, they say that, but they don't practice right. it. Right. Yeah. And it's like, hello, wait a minute. You know, our ancestors showed you guys the love and aloha, but then you guys trying to sell aloha, or you guys trying to abuse aloha, and you guys telling all these foreigners that come here to live here that it's all right. You know, and it's like, oh, okay. You know, and. My thing I want to get out to the viewers and please, because I knew this was coming for a long time and it's been told to me. The land was stolen and they wasn't supposed to be sell out. Hawaiians wasn't selling the land straight out to anybody, not even to America. What happened was other people married into royalty and taught because they married into royalty that they can have the right to sell land. But they was paying for the land and somehow they were still living, some of them, and it's so hard to explain, but the point is the lands haven't been s supposed to be sold. Yeah, I, you know, what I'm hearing as you say that is that people married in, foreigners came in and married into Hawaiian right. families and by getting into the family, maybe they did it intentionally, maybe not, all of a sudden they said, hey, I'm part of this Hawaiian family now, I'm, I'm part of the Ohana, so I can take this land and sell it. Right. Because at that point they saw it as theirs. And we know that that's wrong right. because nobody, not foreigners, not Hawaiians, not anybody can sell land because it's simply not ours to sell. To sell. It's ours to take care yeah. of and pass on to the next generation. generation. Yeah. So there are literally foreign foreign ways that have come in here that wouldn't you say are actually poisonous and hurtful to the people of the land here? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely yes. yes. Because, I mean, look at Ala Moana. They just dumped their, the royal sewage inside there. Yeah. Now, if we had our ancestors here, would they allow that to happen? That would never happen. I mean, to poison our yeah. food source. Yeah. And they saying they take care of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not happening. Yeah, yeah. And we have to, and not only us, but we have to share it with all nationalities and not knowing that they're getting poisoned just as the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. So, Marie, you've had to educate yourself on the, on, the, on the American law. You've had to say, okay, I've got to go in there and play their game and try to beat them at their game. Yes. What's been your experience with that? Um, very good. Oh, good. <laughs> Tell good. us more. We like to hear this. Um, I had to learn fast. It took me all the way to Den Hague, which was an honor because people went there. And I thank you. I thank that one judge for sending the brother there so I can learn because they have documents in Den Hague that talks about our ancestors. In and the Hague you're talking about? In the Hague. So this is over in Europe. You well, went all the way over there. Yes. Well, good for you. And I learned that our people were so loved by every country. Yeah. And that's, I think, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know? And there were treaties between yeah. Hawaii and many different countries. Countries. Yeah. And they uphold, uphold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know what happened to America. Yeah. But that's okay. We still love them. Even yeah. though they say, they're telling people that we don't like them, we yep. still love them, and yep. we'll always love them, yep. yeah? Okay, so you went into court on some court cases, and so what happened? They dismissed it, and then some, they're still trying to hold us to it. They threw us in jail for 30 days, and they threatened us that we have to pay a $1,000 fine and $2,000 fine, but... Just for living, just for 
Occupying sand. <laughs> just for occupying sand. That sounds pretty ridiculous to me. <laughs> well, I Especially guess... Especially when you were here first. <laughs> they want to be everything, yeah, and they have to realize they have to ask, because we come from the generation yeah. before, yeah. and we're the next generation that they're trying to pass it on to, yeah. and we supposed to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. I think we have that right. As Amer um, the federal government said, you know, you folks have a right to say yes and no, but then other people come in and they want to work for a government that don't even belong. And I want to share with everybody, there is a Hawaiian kingdom. Federal government stamped our paper, our envelopes with Hawaiian. So they saying that they recognize the Hawaiian kingdom. No kidding. And when did that happen? I have tons of letters. Wow. So I want to share wow. that with you so, so actually... nobody can say that there is no Hawaiian kingdom and it don't exist. The state of Hawaii don't exist. And I'm very sorry, people. And that's not our fault. Yeah, so we know that the state of Hawaii is like an abs... It's just a concept on paper, if you will. Yes. The Hawaiian kingdom is very real. The nation yes. still exists because the people are here. And for the U.S. federal government to stamp that means they recognize that fact of the existence of yes. the Hawaiian Kingdom. Good for you. So. What, so, what has it been like, you know, emotionally to go in and have to learn somebody else's game and try to beat them at that? Um, emotionally, I, I wouldn't know how to say because I, when I first learned how to play their game, it was, I took it as a little child. And a little child will always win a game, no matter what, win or lose. Uh -huh. He doesn't care. So he comes out being the loser. He knows inside of him he's a winner, <laughs> you know, and so that's how I took it. So it made you smarter each time. Yeah. yeah and so good. it's like, oh, yes, thank you. Mahalo, Kia Kweni. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, wow, we did that, you know. Wow. And it's, it's like, whoa, well, what an accomplishment, you wow. know. And it's, it's so awesome. Wow. So do you think you'll be able to stay on the beach? You're... I ain't giving that beach up. Really? I'm not. Really? Whatever it takes and whatever it costs, I'm not giving that beach up. Wow, good for you. And so whether they like it or not, when they wake up, they're going to see me and my children's face. And when they wake up every day, I hope they have a conscience to say, wow, what if that was us there, you mm. know? Yeah. Especially city and county, the state of Hawaii. Yeah. Because they know they don't have authority, mm -hmm. but they want to push it. Mm -hmm. And hello, people, you know. Yeah. You guys all say you guys get the education, then show it, yeah. you know, and show the love. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the love? We showed you guys. Our kapunas taught us love and to share. So what about you guys now? Mm -hmm. You know, Marie, on the face of it, what you're doing would seem to be just a very simple act, occupying mm -hmm. a space of sand. And yet it's a very profound and important act that you're taking here. So for our viewers, you know, our viewers may say, well, you know, wow, I'm really inspired by watching this lady here, this Wahine. How can I get into action? What piece, what kuleana can I do? What would you say to them about finding something that's important for them to get into action with? To get into action with, you have to come and sleep at any beach park. <laughs> You know, that's the only way you're going to feel it. That's the only way you're going to know what is your place in life. You actually have to come and experience what the people experience. Yeah, for us, it's in our blood. So, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. But if they say, you know, well, I'm just a little old me. I just don't have the confidence to do that. And obviously, she's been doing it for almost four, 15 years. <laughs> so she's got a lot of confidence now. What about that? Well, I never had confidence. But at first, it was like scary and then I just have to adapt to it every day because that's our life yeah but it's also what I'm sensing here and feeling and talking with you it's there's something that goes much deeper than that it's a grounding as a Hawaiian as Kanaka Maoli well it does go a, it goes very deep doesn't it? <laughs> and it does hurt just to find out the truth you know and to bring it out is it's like like how Brother said, you know, going, and we try not to be violent, yeah. Or like how they say we're always beating people up, mm -hmm. so they'd be afraid of us. 
we're not trying to go that route anymore. Yeah, but it's, it's, they're trying to twist things, always trying to twist things. And the way I look at it and the way I try to tell my grandchildren, that's how the devil plays its game. Yeah, mm -hmm. so when, I'm, when they watch the news and they see America always, or the president saying, oh, wow, the other country is so evil. Mm -hmm. And they, they look at the president like, wow, but I don't see them coming into your guys' territory and fighting. Yeah. You guys going into their territory and fighting. So who's yeah. the evil one here? You know, and that's the way I want them to see things in their eyes. Yeah, kind of like the, the cattle calling the pot black. Right. Yeah, yeah. they need to look and, in the mirror yeah. and see who's calling who what. Right. Yeah. And stop the name calling, stop the labels. Yeah. And because you're not labeling the people, you're actually labeling your family. And would you want to label your family and your grandchildren? Uh huh. I wouldn't want to do that yeah. for anybody. Yeah. And so, so I just. So basically, what you're saying is, you know, just come to the table and sit down and let's talk as. As, as, as uh, adults. As adults. Hey, Aloha, hey, Aloha, face to face, yeah. as human beings. And see what see what we can work, work out. Work Yeah. And if you can't do that, then something must be wrong with your your pu'upai, yeah. Yeah. Your heart. And your conscience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Your po. Yeah. So Marie, how, how do you see? Tell me what you see when you look into the future and see Hawaii. How does that look to you? Everybody going home <laughs> to their own country, <laughs> and our people will, and their children will be happy, and hopefully the ocean be clean and not dirty because mm. that is their source that's their icebox yeah so you kill that you kill everything you kill everything yeah. and all nationalities not only hawaiian nation you know not only us you kill every nationality mm -hmm. living up here mm -hmm. what are some of the things we can do to make sure that the ocean gets cleaner and stays clean and we don't pollute it anymore to pollute the ocean going to take 20 years put it, it, the environment to sit on the bottom of the sand, yeah, but that's still not going to help the fish that we eat. And city and county, the mayor should know better not to dump waste in one canal to get out to the ocean because it does take 20 to 30 years for it to be cleaned. Really? Wow. That's a long time. Yeah, and, and who knows? who's going to be around by then. I wouldn't want my grandchildren, my grandchildren, my grandchildren feeding off the polluted food they make yes. cause, yeah. you know? And nobody wants to take the responsibility yeah. of, of saying that, well, we polluted this and, and we did this. You know, they're trying to cover up everything they did and that's not right. Mm -hmm. They don't make things porno. Yeah. What are some of the things you do, your family does, living at the beach to make sure that everything stays porno? and uh you know like that oh we meet everybody from around the country and they love it they have a japanese auntie they have a puerto rican grandma they have a filipino auntie huh? they have a um where's those guys from michigan really yeah so people from all over the world come and stop and talk to you they come and stop and you can't do that in one tent now a house is a tent and you can never meet people there right unless you invite them over you know right. and they just so they, they see you on the beach and they stop and pull in and, 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 and come up and introduce themselves and start talking yeah to you. wow yeah. and that's awesome and i wow. think that's pretty neat that's you know? great and my that's grandchildren great. love it you know because they go yeah. wow mama this is from yeah. all over the world i said yeah and when you they know? pull in what do they tell you why they stopped Oh, they just ask for like information and then they go, oh, do you guys live here? And we say, yeah, we live here. And they go, wow, we can't do this where we live, you know. And say, oh, come and join us then. <laughs> and they go, oh, we wish, but we got to go home because we work, you know. And it's like, okay. Yeah, so what are the, some of the things that you share with them? Hukashau necklaces. Yeah. And they don't hardly stay for dinner, but we invite them for dinner. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So. And what are some of the ideas or messages you share with them? They want to know about everything, and so we share, because they ask, how come when we come into the, to the airport, everything's for sale, and they go, they say, aloha. It's like they're selling aloha. I say, because everything they labeled have a price. They, their own price, it's not our price, because our words to us is special. 
to them, it's all about money making. And yet, they don't even ask the Hawaiians, well, you know, can we use this, or can we use that, or can we make money off of this? And, and that's the sad part. And they go, wow, wow, we never know that. And then on a computer, they have all these messages, oh, come to paradise. They come here, they go, oh, no, it's the mainland all over again. Who yeah. wants to see that, yeah. you know? They got you guys in Grand Shacks. What? <laughs> we don't live in Grand Shack. <laughs> Not no more. But they said, yeah, that's what you have on a computer. And that's, yeah. that's shame that they have to sell it that way, you know? Yeah, so it sounds to me like when they find you and pull off and start talking to you, they have found paradise. Kind of something like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. it's like... So what, ha what is the... Um, how many people would you say you've talked to like that over the years? Uh, we got a hundred letters, a hundred and twenty letters, and it 120 all. Hundred twenty letters. Yeah, and it came. We when I write my PO box because they want my address, so I put Hawaiian Kingdom. Yeah. And just the zip code. So yeah. when they send it, they send it to us like that. So if it's stamped there, that means they're recognizing it. Yeah. And so it's awesome. So people who have pulled over, visited you. They visit with you, they, you give them your address, they go back home and they write you a letter. And send pictures. Isn't that great? So you got this huge family, this huge Johanna. And so I have like a big collection. Great. How are, so you've talked with literally hundreds of people over the years. Hundreds of people. <clears throat> yeah. How have, how have they been affected by visiting with you guys? Oh, how have they been they're changed? mad. They're angry because of what our people got to go through, especially our generation, mm -hmm. and they go, wow, we never knew that, you know, and they said, how can we help, you know, yeah. and then we just tell them, share the love all over the world, you know, yeah. but never tell, because we don't hate America like they say we do, we'll never have hate, that's not the way our parents, our grandparents raise us with hate, mm -hmm. and if you hear something like that, it's just because America hate themselves, you know, that's the way we was taught. And so, just share the love that you, from what you have here with us, just go back home and share that love. And it pretty works out for them, because wow. they're right back and they go, wow. wow. So Marie, if you, uh, if you, you know, I was joking a moment ago about a world tour, but let's say you did go on a world tour, you know, around to different, con different countries or different, let's say cities in America. And what would you tell people as you went around? What, what's the message you'd bring to them? Love and understand. Love, Our and culture. Love and understanding the Hawaiian culture. Yes. Why is that so important? Because that's who we are and that's what we made of, ah. is love and understanding. And what can that do for other people? Put a smile on their face and not be so grumpy all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and see where they go with that, yeah. you know. Because like some of our friends that they write, they go, Oh, my neighbor used to be not so smiley, and they, now they smile, they say hi, and it's like, oh, sweet, sweetie, yes, sir. that's so awesome to hear that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. It's like, wow, your, your thing went just travel around. Yeah. You know, and so. All right, now I got a question for you. I know that some people who live on the beach, if somebody came up to them and said, you know what, see that house across the street, that really nice house? We've arranged for it to be yours. No strings attached. You can go live in there instead of on the beach. Well, some, some of them would say yes and go live there and leave the beach. If that happened to you, what would be your answer? Uh, sorry, no. I'm staying right in this corner. I'll send my children and my grandchildren into that house. <laughs> wow. wow. I'll give them that opportunity. Yes. Wow. But so, for me, I just love this beach, and I'm not giving it up. You're not leaving. I'm not leaving. Wow, the connection is really deep there. So. Yeah, yeah. So is your is your Ohana, your family, from that area? Area? Uh, no, we're all from Hula and Waimanalo. So how did you discover that beach? It discovered us. Well, tell <laughs> well, me about that. Actually, what do you mean? Actually, what happened was, I left home, and I was in Hula. And there was a, they wanted to be a Weinberg village in Haula. There was going to be a what? Weinberg village, like how Haleiwa had one. Okay. And so what happened, Queen Lilio Kalani Trust, I heard about that place. Yeah. And so we said, okay. So we moved in there. They paid for the rent. Mm -hmm. 
and it was supposed to be like 250 yeah but then for a little bigger it's, it's such chicken coop houses really. yeah yeah sure they all are and so <laughs> they was paying for the rent and one day what happened was i was kind of writing everybody's receipt because they said oh maybe we're paying for the rent and we're not getting receipts so i decided to go buy a receipt book mm -hmm. and write everybody's rent and have them take them over there and sign them right mm -hmm. and so they said I was a troublemaker and stuff. So one day we got kicked out of that place, which I said, oh, that's good. Just like God would pick us up and dust us off. Mm -hmm. And we went to Hollywood Beach Park, spent the night there. When police came like five o'clock in the morning and said, you know what? You guys cannot sleep here, but follow this road all the way to a blinking light. Take one right, follow that road, and we're going to take you all the way to the end of this road. And so that's how we found that beach. No kidding. Wow. And then I loved it out there. At wow. first it was like, whoa, okay, sweet Jesus, where is this? You know, <laughs> this is like a desert, but at least I get water, you know, the ocean. Wow. And so after that, we loved it. That's amazing. Even though we was going through our evictions and they were stealing food and clothes and all that stuff. So actually, adversity guided you to that beach. Something like that. Something like that. It, 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 at first it seemed like it was a bad thing, but then it turned into be a very a good thing. Very good thing. <laughs> yep. yep. And now I don't want to give it up because I met so much people that way and now wow. it's going to stay that way. Wow. Isn't that great? You know, Marie, I got to tell you, more of us would do well to embody and have the values and, and be the way you are. It's just been real inspiring to be with you here today, to hear your story. And, and to come across somebody like you who is so filled with aloha for everybody that you meet. Wow. Yeah. I thank the cool and yes super for doing that. Well, yes, and, and I feel like I got a lot to learn and a long ways to grow to come up to where you are. So. It took years. <laughs> well, I'm sure it did a lot of hard work. Marie, thank you very, very much for being on the show. I know I've learned a lot, our viewers have learned a lot. And whatever you do, don't leave that beach. I ain't. That's I'm not. great. That's great. That's great. You have to come out and spend a night. I though. will. I will. I'll, but I'll call first. Okay. I'll call first. Great. Thanks for being on the show. This has been Voices of Truth, one on one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kawani Foundation. I'm Ehukekahu Cardwell. And until next time, ahuyo.